Good morning again, friends. So excited to be back with you on First Friday for my first Friday friend, Friar Antonio. I am really excited about sharing his story with you and for you to get to know this beautiful priest, this man of God, um, who lives down in Duluth, Louisiana, very far from his original home of Australia. And so I'm going to wait for him to click on that little plus sign and then um, have him join me. So glad so many of you are going to be able to watch this morning live. And I know many of you will be watching the recording later. So I'm while we're waiting for Friar Antonio to um, request to join. And Friar Antonio, if you see that little box on the bottom of the screen with the plus sign in it, that's what I need you to. It's a little camera kind of looking thing. Click that and I'll bring you on. I see you, Friar Antonio. Hi. Good morning, everybody. And there is his request. So I'm going to bring him on right now. I might... You may not be able to hear me for just a second. Okay. Here we go. And you are going to fall in love with this priest and their whole mission. Give him just a minute here. Good morning. Peace and good. Peace and good to you. Peace and good to you. Friar Antonio, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Can you hear me okay? I can. You know, not going through the earbuds anymore, but that's fine. Can you hear me? I can, I can hear you okay. loud and clear. Great. Shall we start with the prayer? Yes. Yes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, thank you for this beautiful priest, this priest of God. Lord, I thank you for the mission that he's been given in Louisiana, for his generous heart, and for the beautiful order that he serves with us, the poor friars and the poor nuns. We pray your blessing upon them, Lord, for their multiplication of vocations. And I pray that many hearts would be touched through his testimony this morning as we see the good that you have done in and through and for him. And we give you all the glory. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we pray for protection over our phones, over our electronic systems, etc. Great. So, Fire Antonio, so good to see you again. And I just want to tell everybody just a little bit about how we met. Um, it was just a couple of months ago, I was invited to go fishing down in Dulac, Louisiana. Um, I had not been to Dulac, Louisiana, except I maybe I have been there once before, but um, great fishing down in Dulac. And there was a retreat going on that your order, the nuns, were putting on a discernment retreat, and my daughter, Cecilia, was going on retreat, and so my husband and I ended up going down there. It was like a two-hour drive from here south. You, you wouldn't think there's anything south of Louisiana, of New Orleans, but there is, isn't there? <laughs> quite, quite a ways down there, and um, a fishing community, and so we brought her to the retreat, and then we went fishing with Father Mitch Pacwa and Mike Fulmer and um, just had a wonderful time with them, but also got to meet you and a number of um, the members of your community. And my husband, Mel, and I had the joy of giving you a lift when we dropped off Cecilia. You needed a lift back to, because where did, where is the um, the order based? Good morning to you, Kitty and everybody there. Um, yeah, we, we uh, so we live in southern Louisiana. We're down as south as you can go. Um, so we have two bayous that we're in charge of. We have the Parish of Holy Family, which is on uh, Bayou Grand Caillou and Dulac. Then uh, to the west, we have a set. The second bayou is uh, Bayou Dulage, where we have uh, the Church of uh, St. Elwa. We're in, ch in charge of those two churches there. Yeah, and so that's not a Cajun accent I'm hearing, um, Friar Antonio. And so would you... <laughs> Tell us south. a little bit about your background. Uh, deep south of Australia, thank you. Yeah, we're so um, just to sort of um, yeah, maybe not to work backwards, but we're now in southern Louisiana. Uh, my background, uh, well, um, so I'm uh, born in Australia, so I'm an Australian, born and raised by two Maltese parents, um, the island of Malta, which is just below Sicily in the Mediterranean. And um, and so I grew up in the, in uh, the Catholic faith with uh, Catholic parents, but quickly lost my faith. And um, amongst the world, and uh, as they say in eschatology, that's the the study of uh, the last things. That if we if we don't have um, a direction, 
uh, if we don't know where our destination is, we quickly get lost. Well, we are lost, actually. We don't have a destination. So um, my destination, like at least I was wandering through this world looking for the pretty things of this world. And, um, and so by the age of uh, 20, um, I'd lost my faith completely. I was an artist. Um, if, if you want to go back that far, I don't know, Kitty. I like do. How I want to hear your whole story. Okay. Okay, great. Well, um, yeah, so... So I grew up as an artist. Uh, I mean, I have the gift of, of drawing and art, and so I went into art school, lost my faith. Um, uh, meanwhile, uh, I was uh, invited to go back to Malta. So I had my first visit to Malta at nine to have my first Holy Communion. I went back there at, uh, at 20, 21 as, uh, as a non-believer, just uh, seeking the, the joys of this world. And it was there in, um, it was there in Malta that, uh, you know, my grandmother was praying the rosary for me, uh, day in and day out well like actually 5 p.m every day as the Maltese old ladies do mm-hmm. they gather around someone's home sitting out the front on the front porch praying to our lady of fatima mm-hmm. and um and i would sort of squeeze through this sort of like this bunch of old ladies mm-hmm. praying and um it was uh yeah i i mean obviously i respected them but um but i still hadn't the faith and my grandmother would point at me and say we're praying for your conversion wow. so for wow. mothers and grandmothers out there who um might have uh wayward children i I strongly believe in in the prayers of uh of your prayers and a mother in heaven and so um a little bit claustrophobic of this very small island uh in the year 2000 i was looking for the biggest new year's eve party uh went traveling through europe uh losing myself more and more in the things of this world ended up in amsterdam um experienced uh, uh, a bad experience where i had uh tried uh hallucinogenic mushrooms and and practically saw the devil, uh, which fried me, did, didn't t- try to touch uh, those drugs uh, or any drugs again since then. But um, but my soul was spiraling downwards. And um, yeah, so there's uh, St. Gregory the Great. I, l- I love this phrase. I use it a lot. Uh, uh, who says that um, uh, foolish is the pilgrim who loses uh, sight of his destination uh, while stopping to, to um, admire the pretty flowers of this world. You know, and, and so so I was truly lost at that point, and um, darkness in my soul, um, sins, sins overwhelming me. Um, my friend said, "Well, why don't you go back to Malta?" So we were in um, Amsterdam, went up to London, met up with this friend of mine. He said, "Go back to Malta," because he could see I wasn't happy, even though I had a sort of this fake smile on my face. He said, "Go back to Malta. You got you got family that cares for you for New Year's." And so that that thought sparked up a fire in my heart which um which reminded me of my grand my, my grandmother actually the, the thought of her praying the rosary this this fire which i hadn't felt in my heart for a long time um guided me back down to surprise her for christmas of 99 and um and so on my way down there i ended up in catania which is uh um south really east of of um, of sicily where mount etna is and uh below the mountain this there's a, the main street sort of i mean it's right down but you can see mount etna in, in the distance um and the via etnea i i was uh faced with an existential question that, like uh, i just said well i'm not happy i've left everything to find happiness i'm not happy like i've i've, le- I've, I've left everything for freedom and i feel more imprisoned enslaved as of before and definitely i'm not experiencing love and i thought well maybe maybe the end could be to to end it all and um so uh, um i had been carrying an image of mother teresa of calcutta with me even though i didn't really believe in 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 god and she had only recently died in 1997 i think and um and so the thought of her sacrificing her life which for me was obviously good um up against someone who commits worse crimes like even of uh, of killing others or doing whatever they want you know or even or even someone who just um you know uses their entire life to to um to feed their own self ego that if there wasn't sort of like a a reward for doing good like mother teresa like and they would just have the same res- same reward and would would annul any kind of moral decision making on this life on this side so um so so if there was no reward for doing good then there would be no sense of doing good like um and uh and so i i I said well okay i can't accept that um then why am i here 
and uh, as as I, as I said that prayer, I looked down and I, I met the first three members of our community. So Fry Valentino, who's the founder, and uh, the first two two members, they weren't wearing a habit at the time. So we, we were a very new community. Um, they were just poor people on the side of the road evangelizing. I didn't even know what they were doing. They just, like for me, they, they were happy. Um, they were a community, which is what I knew that I wasn't made to live alone at that point. So traveling the world on my own was just, who could I share my experiences with? It was just very sad. And, um, and they were free. There was, there was a freedom about them, a poverty, which, which I was looking for. May I interrupt for just a second? When I, I remember you shared this story in the car with Mel and me. Right. And <clears throat> you said you looked down. For some reason, when that, when that moment happened, when you saw them mm -hmm. the first time, you said you looked down. For some reason, I thought you were, I had you in my mind as like on the street, um, suicidally, like depressed to yeah. the point of wanting to take your life. Yeah. But where were you? Like, help me paint that picture. You said you looked down. Where were you? Like, well, um, so like spiritually speaking, where where was I? Or, no, no, no like, I mean like physically, because I, I pictured you on the street, but is that not where I, you were? So if you can imagine a main street in a in a town, like the sort of the, the principal street of a city, so a lot of tourists, a lot of uh, people of business, um, like a busy street, people walking. Yeah. But but an Italian one, so not like it was like so. Um, uh, uh, Catania is made of volcan, like it's it's in the in the shadow of the the, the volcano. So they build everything out of black mm -hmm. volcanic rocks. So these buildings are black and but very beautiful, of course, in its in its way. Um, and um, and so the, the the street wasn't very populated. It might even be a no. There was there was traffic moving, but it was sunset. Sun was going down. And um, and so I'm walking along the road, and I looked up. It was um, and I saw the saw them sort of. Uh, they were standing next to this image of the Virgin Mary, um, which was um, you know like, like I guess you know like I think all of us like to use really the symbols like as a sign of blessing and presence of of God with us, and we're very intentional about that even when we try to to evangelize if we can find one. But um, so they were there, and. Um, so I had grown up with uh, like a new age kind of spirituality in Australia. That, that's what drifted me away from the church. And um, um, there was an element to my life that Australia, we, we love the nature, nature, outdoors, camping. Um, I was a scout. And so I was actually at the time trying to, to I wanted to, to get off the grid. Um, just everything, the pressure of having to think of a career um, expense, like, you know, like I, I just graduated illustration design and just thinking about like this trip, as many Australians do, they, they leave after university to travel Europe just to sort of have this experience before they go back and start their career. And um, I think college age is a very good time to, of course, like God, God enables, I think, all of us. In Australia, they call it walkabout, is yeah, the Aboriginal. Originals would like sort of a part of initiation into real life as they they just walk off into the desert and you know like who knows where they end up or what they do but it's kind of like this experience of Jesus going into the garden uh, sorry into the desert and there was something natural naturally in me that was seeking you know my identity who was I why am I here and you know obviously that's not found externally but internally and so it all came to a head then in. 2000, uh, 1999. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And also, just a real quick question about um, the, the drug use. Was that something that was a, a part of your life, or was it just that one experience when you had the psychedelic mushrooms? I slowly, it was slowly drifted away. I mean, I never had hard drugs. Um, so, um, you know, I started drinking, of course, uh, in, in late high school and then, um, and then university, and then marijuana was like i wasn't as a big user like a lot of my friends but occasional user maybe once a week and then um and then just this, this harder drug like this that was the first time i think or second time whilst i was there at, it was the first time whilst i was there at amsterdam that i had used um hallucinogenic mushrooms yeah yeah and so you see these men it was all men yes no there was two men and one woman and that's one thing that really attracted me is that we you know that there was uh it, 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 I mean, it, it shone with a with a purity and a relationship, like relationships that were real. I, mm -hmm. I mean, 
I was very attracted to that too, you know. So, um, in fact, so the first guy I spoke with, approached them. He he didn't speak much Italian, so he he pulled over this 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 woman who, she um she did speak English very well, and she translated for me with. And then then she said, "You need to meet him." And over in the corner, like on the side on the uh, beside us on the road, there was this little guy speaking energetically, and it was Fra Valentina, the founder of our community, and um, yeah, and he. Uh, um, uh, he finished speaking with that person, turned to me. She explained who I was, like uh, of what she knew of me in that short time. He grabbed me by the shoulders and then said, do you want to become a saint? Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, that was sort of like the start of like, what is it? Like I, I, I chuckled. I said, what is a saint? And then he started to explain wow. the resurrected body, like people in heaven have a, have a body. And that, that sort of started it off for, off for me. So then what happened? Um, so so then i'll try and sort of make it they, they invited me to sicily um a series of signs and coincidences um i won't go into detail now because it, it's uh, you can find these things on our website as well our witnesses um, your website Fri the website is poorfriars.org poor friars i'm the reason why i'm a, like i'm a, like was a minute late so I was trying to connect um, from our poor Friars Instagram page, and uh, obviously I think you had requested the friendship of the, the the live from this one, so I had to come back again. And so we're on Instagram, poor p o o r, and for those in Louisiana, it's not a deep fryer; it's f r i a r s. <laughs> poor Friars, and and so the nuns use also that website as well. So we work, um, and the website. Is dot org or dot net that dot net is the old original one and the the dot org is the one that we use here in america at least a little bit more navigable here but um we have our, our nuns live in the other parish in the rectory and and we fry us here in this rectory so we work together and that's been the case from the beginning like uh, valentino understood that mary followed jesus from town to town in evangelization it says that he followed her in the as they preach the good news. And so he's always made it very intentional that the women can evangelize just as we can um, to go out and, and try to um, bring people to Christ. So how much longer after that were you ordained a priest? I'm not a priest, you were ordained a friar. Or is it even more, explain friar and priest to us. Okay, that's beautiful, good. No, it's good that you, <laughs> there's a difference of course that a, a friar. So I can even add, more to that is like between between the difference between a friar a monk and and a priest like, go for it okay so, so friar comes from like you you have the word fraternity right and sorority uh, could you explain to me what they are um yeah you really want me to do that right now yeah just real quickly what what's the difference between a fraternity and a sorority pretty simple right fraternities are a brotherhood of yeah. men and yes. the sororities of women fantastic so in the Word in it's Italy to say fry, you say fra, frate. Guess, frate. Guess how you say nun in Italian? I don't know how. Suore. 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 Sorority. Suore. Okay. Sorority. It means okay. sister. Gotcha. Right? Mm -hmm. In Latin. So frate is what it means. Fraternity. So fra a friar means a, a, a brotherhood. So we, you know, we, we live in the same friary, um, we have meals together, you know, we do everything together, we go out and evangelize together. A monk comes from the Greek word monos, which means one, uh, different from like binoculars, uh, yeah, um, uh, tr uh, uh, tricycle, etc, etc. So a monk lives, lives on his own in a monastery. You know, there are, other, there are other monks there, but they generally, you know, live everything in silence. They come together just to pray and maybe have meals together, but in silence, obviously, uh, well, at least their meals often. So that's the difference between a, frank, a friar and a monk. Someone said frank, uh, um, or I did. Um, and a priest, of, so friars and monks and nuns make vows of obedience, poverty, and chastity. Um, and that's, that's uh, done to the, the local superior, really the general superior of the community in communion with the local bishop but the bishop there's no ordination happening there okay a priest is ordained um by the laying on of hands of the bishop uh, a deacon of course will be can be ordained um he can't celebrate mass or hear confessions but he can do marriages funerals anointing of the sick etc but a priest can obviously um consecrate the eucharist and hear confessions in particular yeah 
So you took the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience as a friar. Yes. Correct. With the poor so friars. That, right. So I did that. I did that. Um, I started my journey. So I met them in 1999. Went back to Australia. Um, with my life turned around, um, I wasn't mature enough to, to, to return because of the, the nature of the, you know, we were a new community. I met this community when there were, there were three members. There was no bishop that was really following them at the time. They were living in poverty. Like, like we, at one point, we weren't even using electricity. We were, like, showering, like, boiling water on a, you know, and then, like, sort of put with a ladle oh. over our head. Like, not boiling water, but warm, hot water. You know, and, and so... Go and tell that to a spiritual director that you met three Italians that barely speak English, that you're going to give your life to that. And so I, I, it was very difficult for me to make that decision. I went into seminary but because I was already in love and I believe engaged to this community. Like I'd already like promised to the Lord, like, I, like the signs were so clear that, I, um, that the seminary was like a living hell for mm. me because I was marry another woman you could say it's still the same bride in christ uh, christ but the community was uh, was definitely something that struck me it had your uh, heart yeah yeah i mean god spoke to me so clear and 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 so i, I say like we say like in the barbecue chicken of god's love um uh, i ended up leaving australia and, and returning to the community in 2003 and um and uh, and so i've been i've been a friar now for uh close to uh, 20, 23 years, 20, 22 years, as, yeah, and um, um, and uh, if we take out my date of entry there, I met the community in, in 1999, though. And then, um, and so I was ordained 10 years ago as a priest, though, when we moved to Louisiana. So can we fast forward a little bit then to, you come to Louisiana, yeah. and it was it Bishop Sam Jacobs who brought you all? Yes, there's, a, there's an Interesting story behind that. You yeah. might like that. Um, so we had experienced some, some some troubles in Sicily, some persecution of some families that didn't want their, nu their, their daughters to become nuns. I mean, uh, I imagine there are a few mothers out there who's I don't know if there's anyone with a daughter out there, but I've seen I've seen um, I've seen the attachment of the mothers to their children in its in its wildest extent. I say like if I've ever seen like a no no offense out there, but. Uh, if I've ever seen someone possessed by a devil, it's the mother, like, you know, like, attached to her daughter. I can understand it. You know, like, we hitchhike. <laughs> it is, it's, a little, it's a radical life. I'm yeah. talking to Sicilian mamas that are, like, yeah. families are tied there. And, um, but it was, uh, yeah, they, they basically uh, forced the, the bishop to kick us out of the diocese. It was either us that left or he wow. That, you know, so in true Sicilian fashion, so uh, uh, we had to leave, and um, and so yeah, we 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 were traveling, we like just sort of sharing our experience in our community with different bishops. We were, I, I I was I hitchhiked to Ireland to meet bishops and um, with two nuns, and it didn't work out there. But we came back to Sicily and started sending emails out. Uh, um, and uh, I wasn't real keen on coming to Australia because uh, to America because I'd grown up in a Western culture and was fascinated with uh, with uh, with foreign cultures. And meanwhile, Sister Effida, she grew up in Germany. I don't know if you know, but they've got this fascination with David Hasselhoff. In, in uh... <laughs> so I can, we can thank so we can thank Jesus through the. You could say through the vessel of uh, David Hasselhoff that we hear in the States. Um, because, <laughs> uh, she's like, why don't we go to America? And I'm like, eh, who believes in God in America? Like very stubbornly and like in my straight true Australian stubborn fashion. And like, at least I was, not everyone's like this, sorry. I saw, I was not fascinated with America because we see, you know, MTV back, back in the day and, uh, you know, Coke and all of the, the, anyhow, I wasn't fascinated with it. They were. Watch. Sorry, they watch David Hasselhoff. That was watch, yeah. I mean, of course, I love America now. Like, um, I mean, I'm fascinated. I'd like totally, I'm so grateful for being here. But, um, but anyhow, so she's kept insisting, said, okay, you try and try and like find send emails out to the bishops in the US, I'll try in the Philippines and here and there or whatever. It just wasn't working for me. And meanwhile, she started getting a lot of interest. I'm like, okay, 
mm-hmm. I'll help as well. So I like understood God was speaking to us. I surrendered, started helping, sending emails out. And whilst we're doing that, I saw this email of a website with uh, this rainbow over the top. Now we know that rainbows are the God signs of the God sign of the covenant between Noah. And in Italy, there's no sort of real huge, or at least there wasn't a huge understanding of what rainbows mean here. Um, and so, like, I honestly, um, so that's interesting. You know, this beautiful rainbow over the top of uh, um, of the pastoral center it was a double. It was a photo of a, dub, a double rainbow. But we, we had like there's 194 dioceses or more here and there. So anyhow, I just saw it, lost sight of, lost track of it. One night I had a, I woke up after having had a dream, and then I don't know. Did I share with this with you, I don't Kitty? Think so. I, I don't, okay. So in the dream, um, God speaks to me in my language. Um, I dreamt that I was holding a Steiner beer in my hand. It was beautiful, beautiful, chilled, you know, like filled to the brim. Well, not to the brim. There was like a beautiful head, and there's you got the little drops that are trickling down the side, chilled. And I'm holding it like it's like it's literally glorious. There's light shining out of this this beer mug and i look up and on the ceiling there's a circular rainbow and i'm like wow and, I, and so i woke up as i'm looking at this rainbow and this beautiful sense of peace comes over my heart now um <laughs> uh i woke up and, and the first thing i thought was a noah and the covenant between god and the boat being the church maybe there's a bishop like in the boat Maybe there's a bishop in the U.S. Like we're focusing on the U.S. Maybe the U.S. is really God's will, and there's a bishop out there who wants to come into covenant with us. And um, and so I told Sister Effida. Sister Effida said, "Oh, you know, there was that website. I saw that web a website with the rainbow." And I said, "Yes, yeah, saw that too." So we, um, you know, we forgot about it. We're still sending out emails. We're sort of in a state of suffering because we don't have a place. And um, and we end up. Um, Three to four days later, we get an email from Bishop Sam, and he says, uh, "I got your email, and I'm interested." So we, we look up Homo Thibodeau, and the website was the one, was the one with the rainbow on it. So, wow. so immediately we understood to focus to you know to focus on under. We had several options. There were several bishops interest interested. So Homo Thibodeau ended up being the one. In fact, you know, I got ordained a priest here, Father Nathaniel. We have community vocations from here as well. So we love Louisiana. And so. You came and then really started ministering to this um, impoverished community, right? It's I mean not terribly poor, but there are poor the fifty well, I mean, people living off the land. Yeah, you've seen it after the hurricane. <laughs> like definitely, what you say is definitely true, but in particular after the hurricane Ida. So tell um, us about that. Now let me just say to you, Father Mitch Pacwa, when he went down there to go fishing with um, the Fulmers, he right. saw. He got to meet you. He saw the condition there, and he did a documentary about your work um, and your community, which is supposed to be coming out on EW10 at some point, I believe. But yeah. Tell us about that, about what happened with Ida, and what your mission is now, and how we can help you. Okay, maybe I, yeah, yeah, I could start with our community of friars and nuns, and that in the context of this situation okay. here. So, um, so we we are a community of friars and nuns. We work closely together we live separately um actually i would invite you if you wanted to you know interview one of our nuns as well like uh, sometime i'm sure they'd be happy to do that um and um and so we um we have uh, dual spirituality of the early franciscans um who went out to evangelize in poverty so we've made vows of total poverty not that money's a sin even the apostles had a safekeeping but we we, we choose to be poor so that we can actually use our poverty as an excuse to meet people and evangelize so we hitchhike and um and uh so i've been hitchhiking for the last 20 odd years you know and um and the, you know just think of how many encounters there have been um but we also have the spirituality of the first carmelites so we're semi-contemplative so each priory or convent has a cloister that we live in that only either the friars can go in or either the, the nuns can only go into which preserves us a certain interior peace and silence that we can always re- retreat to. So much, much like to like the the inspir- like in breathing in and then the going out, the breathing out. Uh, our founder likes to look at our spirituality like that. Um, so we say that through our um, other than our contemplation, 
through poverty, simplicity, and competence. That's like doctrinal uh, understanding to be able to, and also to you know, the spoon feed it in a simple way to people. Um, we hope to, and this is the heart of it, is send souls to the, the sacraments of confession and communion. So um, we were invited by Bishop Sam. Um, uh, I was uh, uh, ordained by him as a deacon and then Bishop Barb as a priest. And about three Three years prior to Hurricane Ida, um, I was asked to be the administrator here just to help out for three months. And so we did that. Um, three months turned into six months. Six months turned into a year. One year turned into now six years. So I've just been an administrator the whole time. Um, I was the parish there. The parish that would be... Holy Family in Doula. Yeah. Um, a year after Hurricane Ida, I was then asked to also take on the neighbouring parish, which is uh, St. Elwa in Dulaj. And um, and so, um, yeah, uh, you know, we're here to, to do God's will um, and to obey the bishop. First and foremost, we're ready to do whatever the bishop says, you know, if it falls into the gospel, we're, we're here to serve. And um, But maintaining respect of our charism. Um, yeah, Hurricane Ida came in and immediately it was obvious that we needed to help. So we started um, doing some distribution, just basic needs and that distribution. A lot of people, you know, saw what we were doing was good and people like to help uh, friars and nuns, especially because we made the vow of poverty. The, the, the donations started rolling in. We started, uh, you know, there was, it was phenomenal. We gave out, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of basic needs were coming through. From that, then I reached out to Mike Fulmer, who has his camper business, Berryland Campers, who has a camp here. And he's, you know, he like, bam, he was ready because he's been through this before. Um, and he automatically set us up with um, 10 campers to start out with. Uh, meanwhile, we did a fundraising uh, um, uh, campaign, um, but with his amazing help, we ended up giving uh, over uh, around about 30 different campers out there. Oh. And... Um, so after the campers, uh, that was a uh, part-time, that's what we call it, like a temporary um, solution to, I would say, 40% of our population who didn't have a house because wow. of the hurricane. Um, and, uh, and then we started mm -hmm. the project with the Man Mennonites. I invited the Mennonites down, and they started um, giving us free labour. Um, the Bayou Community F Foundation, thanks to um, Jennifer I think it's Alamand is how you say last name and, and Richard Richard Watkins, the two of them did a fantastic job. We ended up like, you know, more than $2 million flooded through our church to, to build 24 houses wow. and we built, uh, yeah, and so we ended up building 24, 24 houses for our people on Bayou, Bayou Grand Cayu. And that, that, whole, that whole experience, which, you know, now it's three years, um, praise God, most of it is over. Our churches are still damaged. We're not celebrating Mass in our churches. We're in our KC halls. But yeah, God gave us it's a beautiful opportunity, but you know, all of this is for us is just hopes to be like what we do, an indication of what the, what can happen when we put our trust in God and 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 approach the sacraments. You might be suffering from all sorts of fears and anxieties about the future, or what you need, and what you know what it seems to be impossible to reach. But um, if you put God first in the sacrament of confession, at least at least once a month, and then go to mass at least once a week, you know we. It's what we say is like life can turn around and so when we evangelize we at least propose that to people and not to get overwhelmed we start like start with like three months go to confession once a month for three months and go to mass each week and try it out see how it goes and um you know it's obviously a, a, um, up to god but um we hope to give an example of that by by and we have this guy whose house got like was he asked to stay in the church um, during the hurricane, and he did, and his house got trashed, and he, but, so he's living us with us after, immediately after the storm for a good two or three months, and he was watching it all, and he's like, "Man, you guys made a vow of poverty, but I've seen so much, like so many, like money and like money, like we're not taking the money ourselves, but donations and and goods flooding through this church, like it's amazing, like Saint Francis, like what mm. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom." of god and all the rest will be given to you yep. it's like so real he saw it he touched it concretely yeah mm -hmm. so, um, so how can what are your needs now and how can we help you well um 
whilst I guess um, I will just say our needs, obviously. So we, we seek our need, our need, our need to evangelize. Um, we pray the meditated rosary in people's homes. Like we need to let that word get out. I mean, I'm happy to be invited here if you. Um, we do it online as well. Um, we'll do that. We do we'll it, set, uh, set that up one morning because you know I do some basically something very similar to that every great, morning. Great, great, fantastic. Well, yeah. So our rosaries take about an hour. Um, so we we uh, we uh, we meditate on the mysteries. So the meditation will take like a good. 10 minutes or, or more um and then we sing five hail marys um and so uh, uh it, it's a good combination if it's 10 hail marys it's sort of get, get because beyond the, an hour it sort of gets a little heavy but our theological excuse is saint augustine says who sings praise twice so there you go i like that <laughs> <laughs> um uh we're doing an online one for um uh, the next Friday, actually, in a week's time, we're actually doing one. We we went to Australia, and uh, we met some people that are starting to pray that, that now. But the timing was perfect, so we do it this next next Friday at eight p.m. If anyone's interested, go to our. So I'll just repeat: Poor Friars, like our Poor Friars Instagram page, mm -hmm. but you can go to our website. You can find our email there. It's Poor Friars Vocations um, at gmail dot dot com but uh poor fries vocations but anyhow you, the website the, the emails are on the the website um and uh you can join us online to get to know that better we hopefully like you said we can do that here so that's the first thing is, is like help us in evangelization and in prayer um uh we um help us get the name out for if you know anyone who's um discerning religious life both male and female um that's that's like our number one priority like how can you say here in louisiana food's just not an issue like we don't like you know it's oh you know you know like we got an abundance of food but um we'll accept anything that comes our way of course people uh, bring food to the to the cloister correct. to the parish yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean uh, yeah i mean there is so so not to frighten people um about our poverty um to be a priest, you have to be remunerated as part of the canon law, right? And so they forced us to, to have like a bank a bank account. Now, we can't take money. So our groups of prayer that pray the rosary, they started a non-profit organization that can take donations. So like priestly remuneration like goes to that so that to help the whole community. And that can take donations as well. So for our medical bills, for flights, um, uh what else schooling and stuff like that that helps us out for the big the big expenses but for our day to day we're we we're, we're covered by locals that help us out come visit us down here in Dulag or do large yeah. um weekend masses um yeah and as far as like getting it helping you getting a roof back on your church is that something that we can help you with or is that something that the archdiocese um so that's kind of we kind of got our hands tied behind our backs with the whole um, fema um situation there okay. um but as for interior and decorations uh, i'm trying to get a statue we're trying to get statues like i got a statue that i'm trying to get someone wants to donate you know to beautify our churches definitely just make sure it goes to the church like uh, the, the the intentions are, uh, are towards that holy family church in Dulac or St. Elwa Church in, in, in Dulac, yeah. And so how would they do, do that? Uh, um, I would say the easiest way would, um, yeah, look, look up our websites, okay. Holy Family Dulac or St. Elwa Dulac. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And we can just contact and say, what are your needs? How can we help beautify? Yeah, or... so the secretary, leave a message, leave, leave a number. You could email us even at the Poor Friars uh, email and, we, we, we can direct you towards that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Friar Antonio, it has been such a joy to have you with us this morning. We're at 740. I don't want to keep you too long. Um, I know you have a full schedule and we just so appreciate your time and the love that you've poured into the community here in Louisiana with the other friars and nuns. We're just so grateful for you and edified by your example. God bless you. Thank, no, really, thank you uh, for, for doing this. I know this is just beautiful. The Holy Spirit's been working through you a lot. I, I was impressed because I saw 
friend of mine from uh, from Malta pop up. I'm like, wow, this is like, <laughs> yeah, Miriam. I think she's still watching. Hi, Miriam. Yeah. <laughs> well, Fire Antonio, if there's anything else we can do for you, please let me know, and I will spread the word. We have an amazing community of people who pray together every day. And we'd love to have you or one of the sisters back um, to do the rosary with us one day. I, I think, yeah. I mean, we would love that. Yes. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Would you lead us in a prayer and give us your blessing? Absolutely. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you and we praise you for all the blessings and gifts that you give us in all the storms and um, the damage from storms that happen in our lives. Um, might um, might uh, shake us whilst that they might shake us. We know that um, that you are our rock and you all, your love for us stands firm. Um, we look to you upon the cross, uh, your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who died upon the cross for us, and that through his uh, life, death, and resurrection, um, uh, by following him, uh, we might too find uh, the love, the peace, uh, the healing, uh, that our hearts seek through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We pray that we might continually love um, love you and love one another as uh, as you taught us. As we pray, how Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. May God Almighty and merciful bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Father Antonio, God bless you. And until we meet again, take care and I hope to see you soon. Thank you, Kitty. Bye -bye. God bless you. Bless you. Bye bye. Bye-bye.